Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Kevin and today we're going to talk about one of the most frustrating moments I've had when working with a new smoker and it might surprise you. Let's get to it. When you're in the process of buying a new big smoker, there's a lot of things on your mind, right? You got reverse flow. Do I want it reverse? Do I want it traditional? What type of finish? How thick the steel? Insulated firebox versus non-insulated. So this might be part of the reason why this was so frustrating for me and from what I've heard, a lot of other people have gone through this experience. Their biggest frustrating moment is they don't have wood. That's right. It's as simple as that. And I think that's why it's so frustrating for a lot of people is this isn't a type of smoker you just go to Walmart and get bags of oak or hickory. You need a supply of wood. Now I'm going to show you my supply that I had to order after I had this home. And guess what? It came fresh, which means it needs to season for months and months and months. All right. So I'm going to show you a few tricks to maybe help out speed up that process. But the biggest point I want you to take away is when you are in the process of maybe buying a giant smoker and you're about to cut the check for the deposit, you might want to call your wood person and say, Hey, I need a truckload delivered as soon as possible because you want to start getting that wood seasoned right away. Let's go take a look at the wood pile I have and show you the things I'm trying to do to help speed up the process. So I have seasoned wood ready to go. Let's go. When I brought home the new smoker and I thought it was time to get it fired up, I never even thought about is the wood going to be seasoned when it's delivered. All right, it's very simple, right? You're probably gonna write in the comments, you're an idiot. And uh, for this, maybe I was, but you should take that, my stupidity, and use it to your advantage because this wood has a long way to go. Some of it does. Now, as you can see, I'm starting, well, you probably can't see it. So let me get it up to you. But you can just feel, it's a heavy piece. But you can see it's starting to get cracks but it still has a long way to go. And one of the tools I have to check it is a moisture meter. And when I check it, a lot of it's still over 20. All right, and you really want it, you know, 15 to 18 to get in that sweet spot. And what I'm doing is, it's hard to tell. I know, camera work, thank you. Uh, but I've cut a lot of it way down. And I have different piles. Some of it looks like a mess, but I have different piles for different things. One of the piles is the Chris Karras pile where I'm trying to stack it to get more airflow to help season it quicker. And I have actually in one month been able to get some pretty good moisture readings, been able to use it. I'm going to start doing experiments where I fire it up and use different size pieces of wood. So we'll get some answers there on temperature difference, uh, vents open versus vents pulled back and closed a bit. So there's going to be a lot of experiments down the pipe. So make sure to check out the Meadow Creek playlist or subscribe to the channel. But I'm going to do a lot of different things with these pieces of wood. However, I am still at the mercy of how wet the wood is. A couple things I want to do in the meantime is I want to get a tarp over top, you know, the top foot so the wind can still go underneath of it, but just to keep any rain that might hit it. I also might try to create a canopy to keep rain completely off of it, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to do that. Let me show you some close-ups and then we'll just wrap it. All right, here's a little method to my madness is I have some scrap wood here that I didn't think I was just gonna discard, but I grabbed it. I don't even need to use my torch when I'm starting up a fire, all I need is a paper towel and some oil and that wood gets it going. And then I add pieces like this that have already pre-dried. But I'm definitely not using any big pieces yet from this pile. So the method to my madness is I wanna really cut down some pieces, get them good and dry. And then as I use those pieces in the upcoming weeks, I'm gonna be chopping these up and replenishing them. So I have about three piles of this here, here, and then a small pile with other smaller wood cut down over here, just to try to get me through the next couple months 
as this bigger wood continues the season. Because that's one of the experiments I do want to do is bigger cuts. You know, you, you got a big smoker, you want to use the big cuts. But at the end of the day, is 90% of the wood I'm going to use these smaller 12 inch cuts really cut down? Or is the smoker going to really be able to handle these bigger pieces? We're going to find out. This is one of those weird videos I really didn't think I was going to be doing, but it kind of hit me right in the face. You need a lot of wood to use a smoker like that. So if you're in the market starting to really kick the tires, you want to call your wood person right away. In Maryland here, I paid 275 bucks for this cord of wood. It's hickory and it's oak. Uh, it's great. I'm looking really forward to smoking with it even more because I have used the smaller pieces for a couple test runs and it does, that firebox on that thing is amazing. I'm gonna do videos on that very soon, so check them out. But every everyone I reached out to on our Facebook group, they were saying like in different areas they have no problem getting wood. So West Virginia, for example, everyone's got wood all over the place and it's seasoned, ready to go. But then in Texas, some of my friends were like, yeah, it's hard to come by and you only paid 275, that's a steal. Well, all other places in Texas are like, How, why'd you pay 275? It was only 50 bucks. And they stacked it for you. I had to stack all this. So this is one of the things that you're excited about your new smoker, putting your down payment on it, having it come in, and you're not really thinking about the fuel that goes into that. So hopefully this helps uh, just make you double think, wait a second, I wanna have really good wood ready to go. What do I need to do before the smoker even gets here? As always, I hope you guys are having a great day and make sure to check out the Meadow Creek playlist as I continue to add videos to it, experimenting with a nice towable smoker. You guys have been great and I'll see you real soon.